Hi everybody, Mark Cook with Kid Plains Magazine. We're back with Oshkosh Live at AirVenture 2024 in the Redbird Pavilion. I want to thank Tempest and uh, Avemco for their support of this series and you for watching this. We've had a fun week and uh, it continues here today. We're going to talk a little bit about the Mosaic program. That's the modernization of special airworthiness certification, something that we at Kid Plains and across the industry have talked about uh, as an opportunity to expand uh, light sport or pilot capabilities uh, and uh, certification. I'm here with Ryan Johnson, who in addition to his many roles at uh, Vans Aircraft as uh, chief designer there, uh, is also the chair of the F-37 committee, which is part of the ASTM, which is the f setting the framework uh, for the certification process. Ryan, thanks for joining me. I appreciate yeah. it. Good to be here. My Thank first, you. My first question for you is, where are we on Mosaic? Uh, the recent news is the recent reauthorization bill that just came out uh, from Congress, which mandates 24 months from about last month when that went into uh, effect uh, for the for the FAA to come out with the, the final rule. And that's just to, to give the rule to the public. Um, the FAA, uh, as of yesterday, has indicated they're going to beat that timeline. So that's encouraging. They, they want to come out with something from the May to Oshkosh timeframe next year. And I feel talking to them that they are on track to, to make that date. So that's for uh, letting us know what the rule is. Um, then the next step is standards need to be accepted. So we're writing the consensus standards at ASTM F37 right now. A shout out to anybody who's interested, whether it's a user or somebody with technical experience, we have to be a balanced committee. You know, reach out and, and join us or send an email to me. Um, we need more participation there. So we need to write the standards. Those standards will be accepted by the FAA and that will take six to 10 months. So when the rule comes out, the FAA will set a deadline of either six to 10 months for the rule to become effective. And when the rule becomes effective, then manufacturers will be able to make airplanes, but also the pilot privileges that have been talked about will go into effect. So that, that's quite a process, but it, um, I'm really encouraged to hear that the FAA is trying to beat its own deadlines on that because we've talked a lot yes. about this and there's always there's sort of the concern in the pilot community that everything seems to take a long time, but to get this through a little bit ahead of schedule is really good. Right. So I, the other thing I understand is we've got some expansions to basic med. How does that impact the, the mosaic and the sport pilot issue? Sure. Currently, uh, you know, it's been in the news, basic med is increasing in its scope, but that's going up the, uh, the chain of what you can do with the basic med certificate. It's really not changing the base level of what basic med covers. So if before this news you were thinking that, hey, I need a light sport pilot license and I'm looking forward to the expansion of what a light sport airplane could be, it is, you'll, you'll still need that light sport pilot's license and, and look forward to a, a vastly increased uh, capability of the aircraft that you can fly. So they really are kind of two separate issues and it, they are. It, it is kind of confusing because they overlap in some key ways and a lot, right. of, a lot of private pilots are currently flying on basic med with some of the same benefits. So I think that clarity is really, really helpful. But looking forward to being allowed to fly at night um, through endorsement being able to fly larger aircraft, it's, it's exciting what's coming in light sport. It does seem like there's a broad easing of, of some of the rules and regulations that reflect the reality of, you know, basic med has been successful, light sport has right. been successful, and we're sort of given a little more rope because we've done a good job with it. Right, and I, I think a, a shout out to the FAA in this instance. I was there in May uh, with AOPA at their conference, and you can see throughout the FAA, you have real pilots that understand what's going on. Yeah. So uh, they understand they're flying airplanes just like us. They're paying for fuel and paying for maintenance just like us. They're paying for new airplanes just like us. So they get it, so to speak. That's great. Now I know as part of the, uh, the Mosaic original proposal, there was a, a little back and forth on stall speed requirements as, as well as some of the other uh, specifications in the category. Where do you think we're going to land on the, the final rule on stall speed? On stall speed, this is a concern of what gets uh, added to the rule. Currently, we're at 54 VS1, so that's flaps up, and it's, it's fairly limiting. Um, the alphabet groups, as we like to call them, uh, Gamma, AOPA, EAA have all proposed uh, 58 knots, VS1, but that's still leaving out a large 
part of the group of aircraft that have flown here into Oshkosh. Uh, if we look at the EAB community, about 60% of the aircraft that flew into the show uh, last year, and I assume this week as well, would not qualify. And if we look at the, the rule that was proposed by the FAA twice in the first four pages, it talks about shifting people further up the safety continuum into the ELSA market from the EAB market, which does have a safety benefit. And if we're going to do that, we need to propose an airplane or bring an airplane uh, to market under those rules at higher stall speeds that's really going to attract people. It's one thing to have an airplane that you want to learn and train in, but that's not necessarily the airplane you want to buy and use. So for the robustness of this market, and I think the FAA is looking at that, we'll, we'll see where they come out. Um, they're definitely looking at what's been proposed by, by the uh, AOPA and EAA and, and Gamma. We'll see where it falls out. We hope that there is a further expansion though. Uh, currently, primary category established in its preamble that 61 knots VSO was a safe stall speed. And we hope there's a disconnect between if a light sport pilot wants to fly 54, if that side of the FAA is concerned about 54, the hope would be that there could be a higher stall speed for light sport airplanes, and then a light sport pilot through an endorsement could fly like a private pilot this expanded LSA. There's a lot to be determined. We won't know for another year. It does strike me that there is quite a disconnect there because we've had uh, Part 23 certified aircraft that are 61 knots, certainly not a safety record associated with or safety uh, detriment associated with that. And it does seem like a disconnect, especially as we're going to have four-place airplanes, heavier airplanes, faster airplanes. Uh, it, it seemed like to me like an artificial sort of closing of the box. So let's, let's hope. Let's hope, yes. <laughs> I like that. So we do have a, a lot of our Kit Planes readers obviously are flying and, and considering and building uh, experimental amateur built aircraft. It's a little complicated where experimental amateur built ELSA and Mosaic kind of come together. What, what should they be thinking about? I think this is an exciting time for aviation. It's why Vans Aircraft is part of this effort, putting so much effort into the expansion. When we look at ELSA, we've been for years uh, governed by the 51% rule. And there's only so much that a kit manufacturer can do. And the FAA realizes that when more is done by the manufacturer, you have a safer product in the end. And two week to taxi even can only go so far. It was a great effort. Uh, Michael Vithus now at Vans Aircraft brought that to the market. But we can go further. And to think about home building where there's not a 51% rule, and we can have those critical systems supplied to the customer, where an airplane is delivered with your four main manuals, you know, maintenance manual, a POH, flight training supplement, and a production acceptance procedure, so that first flight is defined and, and safer than it could be in the current world realm. But I think as a kit builder, you'd be looking forward to building an ELSA. And you're not stuck with, you know, once you have it uh, the airworthiness certificate as an ELSA, you can then uh, do what you want inside the airplane. You could rearrange the panel, add new things to the panel, so the benefits are there. Without what, and I, I hate to say the limitations of the current LSA because it's a, it's a better useful box, but certainly benefiting from the expansion of that that you would get under Mosaic. Right. Well, as a private pilot, you could fly it as you wished. Yeah, yeah. So one of the advantages of the experimental amateur built scene is it has to do with the maintenance and the ability to do your own maintenance, especially if you get the repairman yes. certificate. How right. does that work in Mosaic? Currently under the MPRM, maintenance is a gray area. We're hoping that they allow training to get a certification, uh, you know, a training certificate that would allow you to do certain levels of maintenance on your aircraft. And the great part about that, instead of under the 51% rule, one person gets that maintenance certificate and it goes away when the aircraft is sold, that anyone can get that training and do specific uh, operations or maintenance on an aircraft. And I think we've seen in the, in the LSA category that that's been successful, the training, training requirements. It has been. And again, you know, the FAA has been looking at the safety record of LSA. They've been looking at the practical uh, responses to LSA over the last 20 plus years. And this really emboldened us to move forward, emboldened them right. to consider moving Equivalent forward. Equivalent or better safety record than general aviation. 
That's and you know what? That's really what we want, we want anyway, right? What we all want. Exactly. It will expand the industry because people know that they can buy a safe product. Exactly. So right now we're kind of in the short event horizon as we get to the FAA releasing their rule on Mosaic. But you and I had talked about earlier, this is, this is not necessarily a short-term view. How do you no. see that? This is a long-term view. And when we look at Mosaic, currently what's being produced in a flight school is under CAR 3 standards. The 172 was designed under 1960 standards. And because of that, it can still be produced under those standards and it doesn't raise the cost. Uh, if you produced a 172 under the current standards, it would be a lot more expensive. Yeah. And that's why those airplanes are close to or over a million dollars. And what's gonna happen in 30 years? Are we still gonna be producing the same airplanes under that CAR 3 standard? Uh, you know, the, the Model A was 97 years ago. That's gonna be 90 years of the same airplane. Are we still giving driver's ed in, in a Model A? No. Yeah. So we need to bring new low cost alternatives to the market and Mosaic is a great way to do that. It really does seem to be a good trigger for development, lower cost development. And I think it's an opportunity for some manufacturers who have maybe been in the experimental world and maybe been in the LSA world to, to come in and, I'm not gonna say threaten the Cessnas, but it certainly supplants some of these very old airplanes. It's a platform on which new technology can easily be introduced to the market. And that's gonna bring safety, confidence, and an expansion of what real people can fly in an airplane. And uh, I don't think they should see it as a threat at all. I don't think they do either. And um, we're all looking forward to the innovation that can be brought into the marketplace. I agree with you. Ryan, thank you for joining me. I appreciate the Thanks time. Thanks for having me. We're really looking forward to, uh, to next year when the FAA releases the, uh, the final rule. And then, of course, ASTM has some work to do to, to uh, look at that rule and figure out some other tweaks. It's not going to be a snap the fingers, but I think this is a, an important move in the right direction. So.